Good morning, church. Today we uh, finished up some history about Israel and the kingdom of Judah. We wrapped up the books of Kings and Chronicles uh, with the community going into exile with Chronicles reminding us that there's a, uh, a happy ending for Israel because God remembers his promise that they will be restored and brought back and the temple that's destroyed will be rebuilt but not before this time of of exile where the land will take the sabbath rest that they denied it and this is important because israel was disobedient for so long and they abhorred god's sabbath that finally god said look i will make the land rest i will give it the rest that you denied it by getting you out of here the very first daily devotional that we did was about rest and the need for us to rest regularly as people and now that we see that one of the reasons that god evicted israel because of their idolatry their refusal to sabbath and trust him we should take this to heart and say look i remember i know that I need to trust God and I need to take a Sabbath rest. I need to trust God. What does the Sabbath say explicitly? Why do we take it? Number one, it tells us that God loves us. He knows how he created us and that we are created to rest. And when we rest, we turn our trust back to God and say, God, thank you for the rest. I trust you and I am going to put my labors in your hands today and I just love you. Church, there's, there's no better expression of trust than when we put our labors and our money in the hands of God and say, look, it's yours. It's all yours anyway. So I'm going to give this to you and lay it at your feet. I don't know if Saturday is your day of rest, but church, I just encourage you to pick a day and take it and put your labors down and trust the Lord your God. Now in Revelation 12, it's a scary chapter. We have lots of scary imagery and things that, that we don't, are not easy to understand. So we'll put on our interpretive caps today and see if we can take a crack through the wisdom of God at trying to parse out what is being talked about. First, we have the woman. Here's a woman clothed with the sun with the moon under her feet and a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in labor and agony as she was about to give birth. Um, I believe this is going to be Old Testament Israel. We go way back to um, one of the visions that Joseph had. His father was the moon, his mother the sun, and the twelve sheaves of wheat, or the eleven sheaves of wheat that all bowed down to him. And we have similar symbolism and um, that this woman, Israel, is going to give birth to a son who's going to rule all nations with an iron rod. That's imagery for Jesus. So we see um, a great vision of the Messiah, the ruler, coming out of Israel and this dragon, Satan, who wants to devour that child. Uh, but is not able to because God himself uh, comes to his aid. And then this dragon is thrown out of heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back, but he is thrown out. I often had thought initially that perhaps this was like a pre, pre-creation fight, but as I look at it, it says, Then war broke out after the birth of this child. And so there's at some point after the birth of Messiah that there is a spiritual heavenly war in which Satan is cast down. And then he is roaming the earth seeking to destroy us who love the Lord and pursue his commandments. But here's how it goes. They conquer him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they did not love their lives to the point of death. By the blood of the lamb who purifies us and forgives our sins. 
and by the word of our testimony, we will overcome. Don't forget those two things, and they are both God-focused. We didn't generate either of them. God creates that testimony within us by calling us. He shed his blood on the cross for us. Those are our weapons that we cling to to overcome our enemy and to pursue the good of the Lord our God and to bring his word and his kingdom come.